In this question, we ask to express 3 plus root 3i all to the power 5 in the form a plus b root 3i, where a and b are integers. OK, so this is very similar to the question we've done in the last one, but it looks to be slightly more tricky. What we need to rely on is De Moivre's theorem, and that tells me that if we have r to the power of n multiplied by cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of n, this will be equal to r to the n cos n theta plus i sine n theta. If that's new to you, again, go back, check it out. It should all be there. These playlists are sequential, so all of the learning kind of builds off this. Uh, we've currently got this in um, Cartesian form. So z is equal to x plus i y. Or in this case, they put a plus b i. Um, generally, we give a Cartesian in this form. What we want is a polar form, and the polar form is r cos theta plus i sine theta. You might hear this as mod arg, the modulus and argument form. So let's look at this as a complex number on the argon diagram. You might not need an argon diagram, but I think they can be helpful. So this one, what we've got now is 3 uh, plus root 3i. So let's put that there. So it's going to be something like so. So now what we first want, if we want in polar form, is r. r is going to equal the absolute value of z, the modulus which is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we can say r is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 3. So that's going to give me 9 plus 3, which is going to give me the root of 12. Um, could we write, I think I'm going to write this as 2 root 3. So r is going to be 2 root 3, or root 12. Let's now look at the argument. The principal argument now is where tan to the negative 1, so the inverse tangent, of y over x, that gives us theta, our principal argument. So if we consider this, what we're looking for then is the inverse tangent of root 3 over 3. Hopefully we should spot that. You'll often see this as 1 over root 3, when, and this has just been rationalised. That gives us that the principal argument for theta is going to be pi by 6. So we can rewrite this now, and we can say z is going to be equal to 2 root 3 cosine of pi by 6 plus i sine of pi by 6. And this now is in polar or mod arg form where we've got now a positive r and we've got our value of the argument between negative and positive pi. What we're interested in though is z to the fifth. So we've got z to the fifth which is going to now be equal to 2 root 3 to the fifth then we're going to have cosine of pi by 6 plus i sine of pi by 6 all to the power now of 5. And we can use De Moivre's theorem right here. Let's just deal with this though. Um, we'll write it out. So what we want to do is find this. And that's not an easy thing to deal with. 2 to the 5th is 32. Um, 3 to the half power to the 5th is going to give us now, what's that going to give us? Um, 9 root 3. So just take your time working that out. If we think what we've got here is 3 to the 5 over 2. Okay. So what we want then is a square root of 3 to the 5th power, which should give us now, it should look something uh, like 9 root 3. So what we've got then is 32 lots of 9 root 3. Um, so what's that going to be? 288 root 3, does that make sense? Let's just work that out. If I take 32 off 3, 20. So this is going to be 288, and that's going to be root 3, which is quite messy. Um, that sounds logical. So what we can now write is 288 root 3. Now we can write this using the, the idea up here that uh, cos theta plus i sine theta to the n is cos m theta plus i sine m theta. We can write this as cos of 5 pi by 6 plus i sine of 5 pi by 6. Okay, so that's what we wind up with. So let's have a look at this. If we think about this now, what we're going to have is uh, z to the fifth. Now, we've got our 288 root 3, which I'm assuming my maths is correct. The cosine of 5 pi by 6 is negative root 3 over 2. The sine of 5 pi by 6 is going to be um, 1 half. So we're going to get plus 1 half uh, i. 
And that's where we wind up. So all we've got to do is simplify this. So what's that going to leave me? Uh, oh, that's going to be, um, what are we going to be left with? Now, three, negative three root three times by three is going to give me three. And then it's uh, times, and this is going to cancel. So it's actually three times one, four, four, which is going to give me, what's that, 432? Let's, I think that sounds right. Uh, three, yeah, that works out. So now if you multiply this, and apologies, I'm kind of doing it as I go. Root three times by root three is three. We've got a negative. The 288 and the two are going to cancel. So we're going to be left now with negative 432. And then on this one, what we're going to be left with now, if we think about this one, we're going to now have half of the uh, 288 root three multiplied by i. So we're going to have, what's that? going to be 144 root three i. So there we go. Um, you could just calculate on that, I suppose. Uh, but take home message in the form a, what if they want it, a plus b root 3i, a is going to be equal to negative, uh, negative 432, and b is going to be equal to 144. So there we go. Um, that's, that kind of sounds right. That seems to all work. Um, and there we go. So uh, nice little exam style question using De Moivre's theorem.